Okay, so this is the Lab 3 video lecture. We want to give you guys a little bit of more, inf more information than what we probably could in lab. This is one of the few times where we deal with concepts that you may not see in lecture at this point. It may be a class behind or something. Um, technically, the concepts are relatively easy, uh, but it's sometimes nice to have it broken down in a lot of detail. And because of the amount of time that this lab takes, it's not always easy to include this part of the lecture, the procedure part of the lecture, and complete the lab on time. So we're going to talk about the percent composition of a metal chloride in this lab. And the way we're going to do that in this lecture is we're going to talk about what it means to, talk, uh, to have a chemical reaction and a little bit about chemical equations, including those mole-to-mole ratios. We'll talk about the two equations you're going to deal with in this lab, even though uh, the one should be relatively familiar after lab two. And then here's where I want to focus. When we get into uh, the lab, you're going to tie all of these concepts together using an equation. And that's where we're going to really deal with. Now, a chemical reaction you guys learn in, in lecture is where you have two reactants reacting to produce two products. Something like um, CH4 reacting with oxygen to produce CO2 and water. Now, we have our reactants on the left and our products on the right. So you basically read a reaction or a chemical equation the way you would read a sentence from left to right. Here we have methane, which I don't expect you to know the name of yet. Um, reacting with molecular oxygen to produce CO2 and water. <clears throat> now, matter is neither created nor destroyed. That first law that you talk about way back in Chapter 1 holds here. And so we need to have a balanced equation, which means everything you have on the left, you should have on the right. So let's make a tally here. C-H-O. We have one carbon on the left, four hydrogens, and two oxygens. That means we should have one carbon, four hydrogens, and two oxygens on the right. So we come over here, and we do. We have one hydrogen, I mean, excuse me, one carbon, but we only have two hydrogens and two oxygens here, plus one makes three. So this is not balanced, which means somehow we've had some magic happen. So what we do is we create a balanced equation by adjusting coefficients in front of our um, compounds. We can't change the subscripts because you guys learn that the subscripts of a compound can't change. You make a compound, that's fine, but CO2 is, carbon dioxide is always going to have one carbon, two oxygens. You can't adjust that. So what we're going to do is add a coefficient. Here I need four hydrogens, I could just come over here and add a two. And that does give me four uh, hydrogens. Two times two is four. But now I also have two oxygens plus two oxygens in water. Two from here. Two times one is two over here. So overall I have four oxygens. So what we're going to do is add a two in front of oxygen to indicate that we have uh, really used four oxygens and produced four oxygens. And now we have a balanced chemical equation. So at this point, we can talk about this reaction using a chemical equation that looks like this. Now, technically, you guys are dealing with that a little bit as well in this lab, except, guys, we give you the equation. We tell you you're going to have some metal plus some number of hydrochloric acids reacting to produce some metal chloride plus some amount of hydrogen gas. All you are going to have to do is change all these ends. And we even tell you in the pre-lab that the N is equal to the metal ion's charge. Oops. So for example, if we had calcium, calcium is in group 2, so it would have a 2 plus charge. So to rewrite this, we would have calcium plus 2 HCl, we got that two from the charge. We're not balancing here, um, but using what I, what we tell you to in the pre-lab will give you the balanced equation. Produces 
calcium chlorine, and again we're going to have 2 here, plus 2 over 2, or 1, H2. Now if we check calcium, hydrogen, chlorine, we have 1 calcium, 2 hydrogens, and 2 times 1 is 2 chlorines. On the right, we have 1 calcium, 2 hydrogens, and 2 chlorines. So using this equation from your pre-lab gives you that nice balanced equation. We haven't asked you to do um, detailed stuff with that yet. Um, now if we were to do something like, oh, I don't want to give you exactly. Let's go with chromium 3. If we did chromium 3, we could rewrite this again. Chromium plus 3 HCLs produces chromium Cl, and remember we're going to change that into our th charge, which is a 3, plus 3 halves of the H2. And we could check, we've got a balanced equation, one chromium here, one chromium here. Three hydrogens, three times two is six, divided by two is three hydrogens. Three chlorines and three chlorines. So again, this is balanced. So we're not asking you to balance these equations, we're just asking you to rewrite the number of what the charge would be. Um, now, in unit two or chapter two, you learned how to write formulas by making a table. And I'm telling you that this formula we give you matches that. If we were to make a formula, if I told you to draw the, uh, the formula for calcium chloride, ion, number, charge, and total. We know that any time you have a compound, the total charge must add up to be zero. For calcium chloride, you have calcium and chlorine. Calcium's in group two, so it has a two plus charge. Chlorine's in group one, so it has a one minus. So to make these balance, the lowest common denominator here is gonna be two plus and two minus. That's the only way we can get these to balance. So we're gonna need one calcium and two chlorines. And again, we write the formula calcium Cl2, CaCl2, it works out. So try not to get too bogged down about formula writing and equation writing here. Just plug it into what we tell you to and it will work. You'll get into the more detailed part of this over the next four labs after this one. But this is just kind of an introduction. Now, the other thing I want to tell you about chemical e reactions is that they have a ratio. The way that you read this is every time you have a coefficient, you consider it the number of moles. So here we have one mole of methane reacting with two moles of oxygen to produce a mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. So there's a ratio. We could also say every time we use one mole of this, we use two moles of this. Or every time we use one mole of this, we will produce one mole of this. There is a ratio that you can use with those coefficients and that is very helpful for us. So let's go into percent composition for a second. Let's say we were looking at chromium 3 chloride, uh, which, we, we, which we produced on the last slide. We could look at the percent composition of each element here, okay? Um, first thing we would need to do is to find the molar mass. So here we've got an atom, number, mass, and total. We know that chromium 3 chloride has chromium and chlorine. According to the subscripts, there's one chromium and three chlorines. The periodic table tells us, um, actually, uh, that the mass <laughs> of chromium is something I have to look up. Open. Interesting. There it is. The mass of chromium is very small, so we're going to round to 52. Let's just call it 52. When you do this, you should go to at least two decimal places, but probably uh, the entire mass on the periodic table to make sure you get it right. 
For chlorine, it's 35.45. That's the atomic mass from the periodic table. So here this gives us 52 plus 3 times 35.45. 35.45. Which is 106.35. That is the total mass from chromium in this compound. So our overall molar mass is 158.35. I'm not going to deal with sig figs because um, really I should go all the way out. I just I couldn't see this on the periodic table that I've got opened on my other screen. Um, so we're just going to pretend zero zero. So this is grams per mole. So if we want to find the percent composition of something, the percent composition is the grams of the element we care about over the total grams of the element of the compound times 100. So for example, the percent chromium is going to be the grams of chromium in the compound over the grams total times 100. So that gives us 52.00 here over 158.35 times 100. So in our calculator we have 52.00 because uh, that's what I see on the periodic table, or this one, divided by 158.35, oops, times 100 gives us 32. Uh, 84% chromium. If we were to do it for chlorine, the percent chlorine, we're going to again take this total mass of chlorine, grams chlorine over grams total times 100. And so we're going to use this 106.35. We're not going to use the, each an individual. We're going to use the total mass of chlorine over the total mass of the compound itself, which is 158.35 times 100, and you end up getting 106.35 divided by 67.16% percent chlorine. So that's kind of how you do th that math. Now for percent error, now in the last lab you guys did, keep that. We talked about percent error a little bit, but here we have a different, slightly different um, equation. Here we have this, where we're using the absolute value instead of, um, instead of using parentheses. Now the reason we do that is because sometimes there's labs where we don't really care if the difference is a positive or a negative value. And then there are labs like this one where we actually do want to know. Uh, um, or labs like this one where we don't care. Last week you did the density of sucrose. We kind of did want to know there. So it's up to um, your instructor whether you really talked about this or not yet. So here we're going to plug in an experimental value and compare it to the theoretical. So in lab, what you're going to do is you're going to have a piece of metal. You're going to measure it out on the analytical balance, which means, guys, you should have three decimal places or at least two sig figs. So you're going to measure out something like 0, 4, 0 grams of some metal. And um, we tell you in lab what it is. Um, I don't actually know which metal we're using this semester, so it'll be a surprise for me as well. But you're going to measure this out, and you are going to um, react it with your hydrochloric acid. So you're going to know, for example, let's just say we're using chromium-3. Um, hold on. plus 3 halves H2. So you're going to know that you're going to start with something like 0 0.040 grams of chromium. And we really want to find out um, what kind of errors we're having in lab. 
So you're going to react these two things together and you're going to be collecting the hydrogen gas. Now the way you do that is the hydrogen gas is going to be collected underneath water in a graduated cylinder. So you've got this tube that's over in your reaction vessel where you've got your metal um, and the acid and it's all bubbling up. And so you collect that um, that hy hydrogen gas, you're going to watch it fill, and you're going to read the volume. Now when you read the volume of this, you're going to have the milliliters of H2 gas. Now a second ago I said all of these coefficients were equal to moles. Well we can't do anything with the milliliters of H2 that you read on that graduated cylinder. So we have to convert it from milliliters to moles. There are actually several ways to do this. This time we're going to use this equation. This equation has P and atmospheres, it's your pressure and atmospheres, your volume in liters, this is your moles, R is a, is a constant at 0.08. 206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And then T is your temperature in Kelvin. So your temperature in Kelvin, you're going to find that at your lab station. Um, if not, there's always that thermometer on the front uh, counter in the room. R is the same for everybody. We can use the pressure in the lab. Um, which is again going to be on that barometer. Your instructor will, will tell you what it is. Um, you may have a small conversion, but we'll see. And then your volume in liters, so we're going to have to go from milliliters to liters for this. And then you can plug it in to find your N. So N is equal to PV over RT. That's in your pre-lab. Now this is going to be given to you. This you measure in your graduated cylinder. This is given to you. And this, you're going to get the temperature in Celsius plus 273. This, you're going to get the milliliters, but you're going to convert to liters because there's a thousand milliliters in every liter. Now, that is going to give you, when you plug the pressure times volume divided by R divided by T, that gives you the moles of H2. Once you know the moles of your H2, you can use the um, coefficients in that equation to go from moles of H2 to moles of your metal. So for example, if we had uh, chromium-3 as our metal, we would say that the moles of H2 and then to convert to moles, we would use the moles of H2 in that equation, which was 3, 2, 3 halves, 3 halves, and there's only one chromium. So we would have one mole chromium. Moles of H2 cancel and you'd be left with uh, moles of chromium. Now, let's look at what this is really going to look like. So I've rewritten this um, pre-lab question that you have and I want to go through it. This is exactly what you're doing in lab, guys. You're going to weigh out some amount of metal. This is smaller than what you guys will do. And you're going to get the temperature of the lab. Again, watch your sig figs because you should have at least one decimal place. Um, you're also going to read the milliliters of your gas that's produced. You have a gas constant and the pressure is going to be given to you. So you're going to go through and really try to find the overall atomic mass of your metal. Let's first deal with this. To go between Celsius and Kelvin, it's just the temperature in Celsius plus 273. So if we have 21 plus 273, you get 294 Kelvin. Now guys, again, watch your sig figs, but for my purposes, I'm going to stop here. Um, volume of H2 gas. Well, if we have milliliters, we can convert to liters. Oops, this should be 34. I've already done that. So 34 milliliters. So 34 milliliters. We know every time you have a thousand liters, you get one milliliters, you get one liter. So 34 divided by that thousand milliliters get 0 0.034 liters. 
You can see I was already playing with this. R and P are given, which means if we want to find that N, N is equal to P and V over R and T. We're going to plug those values in and get the 0.975 atmospheres, I'm going to run out of space, times the, two nine, uh, times the, the volume of 0 0.034. Okay, let's rewrite that where you guys can actually see it. I can do better than that. It doesn't help if you can't see it. So we're going to have 0 0.975. You're going to write the units on your slide. I don't have, um, or on your paper, I don't have room. So you're going to pretend, well, maybe I can do that times the volume of 0.034 liters over 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin times the temperature of 294 Kelvin. Now look guys, Kelvin and Kelvin cancel, um, atmospheres and atmospheres cancel, liters and liters cancels. You're left with 1 over 1 over moles, which is the same as moles. So that's going to be good. Now, plugging all this into your calculator, 0.975 times 0.034 divided by 0 0.08206 and um, that 294 gives you something like 1.37 times 10 to the minus 3, and this is moles um, of H2. Now guys, technically I have 3 sig figs, 2, 4, 3 here, so I would really want 1.4 for my math. Um, so make sure you guys are watching your sig figs for your calculation. You're watching your sig figs for every measurement you make, and you're showing the calculations that you do. So this means you're going to use that ratio um, to find uh, the moles of metal. Now, for this experiment, this pre-lab question, we tell you to do one-to-one. -one. So moles H2. We know, according to this, every time we have one mole H2, there's one mole metal. So 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 1 times 1 gives you that same number. To find the molar mass, the molar mass is grams per mole. So you're going to take the mass, the grams, and divide it by the moles. 0 0.0301 grams that you weigh out on the scale over the 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 that you calculated moles and you get divided by something like 21.5. Now technically guys in lab we will tell you what it is. Um, so, for example, um, this looks like it is closest, even though I changed all the numbers, this is closest to me to either sodium or magnesium. Um, and just to kind of keep it interesting, I'll keep it as sodium, even though it doesn't really work here. So this is going to have the molar mass of 21 point that. So sodium is probably it, because this has got a mass of 22.99. So we were able to experimentally calculate the grams per mole of a unknown metal. Now we could go in and calculate the percent error of that. We could look at the experimental minus the theoretical, right? Experimental minus theoretical. So that's our 21.5 minus 21, oops, excuse me, 22.99 over, and this is the absolute value, the theoretical 22.99 times 100. So in your calculator, 21.5 minus 
minus 22.99 divided by 22.99. And you get something like, now this tells me negative 6.5%, but it tells me 6.5% error. I don't care that it's big or small because these absolute values tell me I don't, I don't need to worry about that. So that's what this is about. Experimentally, you could find the molar mass of a metal, of an unknown metal, and you could compare it to a theoretical value that you had. Um, so I just kind of want to give you guys that heads up that this is what this is all about. Hopefully this is a little bit helpful. Let's keep that um, for answering your pre-lab questions and dealing with that. Um, let us know if you have any other questions, and we'll see you.